Hi guys, I'm Andrew from Cruise Master and today I'm joined by Nathan from Mega Life Batteries and we're going to be talking about lithium starting batteries. Well, thanks for coming in. I'm keen to learn more about these batteries. Um, we've been using them here at Cruise Master for quite a few years. We were introduced by a mutual friend, Luke, um, a few years ago. We got one of the batteries into my 70 series. I actually had a couple. I think we were part of kind of getting things going. I was really impressed with the durability of these batteries and also the ability to be able to um, engage a secondary cell, which Nathan's going to talk about um, in a few minutes. Um, give us a bit of a background of who Megalife is. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for having us on, Andrew. Um, Megalife battery was actually originally uh, a racing car brand. So about six or seven years ago, Megalife just made exclusively our, our racing brand of batteries, which were uh, not uncommon in the racing world for their lightweight, their durability, their high starting power. Uh, and then we saw a bit of an opportunity to sort of do a few things a little bit different, but use the technology in the, in the recreational vehicle worlds. With these lithium batteries, what makes them a recreational battery like from their racing heritage? We sort of kept all the good stuff that we could from the racing side of things with the lightweight and the durability, but um, having not having the size constraints and needing to be able to suit sort of a direct replacement drop-in, what we've done is, is taken the technology, put it in case sizes that everybody can use, and then added a few extra features like our emergency start and, and some other things on there. So yeah, just pretty much taken the, the goodness and the, the proven technology and put it in something that people can use. Yeah, and they, they really are proven now. They've had a few years out in the market We've done a few of them in a few 200 series. Um, particularly on the 200 series side of things, they have issues with front axle capacities. And obviously there's a benefit in weight with lithium. Can you tell us a bit more about the weight side of things? Sure. Um, so we're getting about a third of the weight per volume that we do on a regular AGM or lead acid style battery. So something like this N70 mm. in front of us here is about 28 to 30 kilos in a lead acid and we're seeing this at down at just under 10 or 9.5 kilos to be honest. So yeah, that's, that's just basically the chemistry difference between not having to use the heavy material lead and using a lightweight material being lithium as the energy source in this case. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, um, it's really important to make sure we manage these types of things and benefits of you know, lightweight batteries are really gonna help in managing weight on tow vehicles. So one of the big things about the Mega Life battery in particular is the second cell and the, um, and the, the battery uh, monitoring gear inside. Tell us a bit more about how all that works. Sure, so you might have seen it in a, in a few lithium products in general, but uh, these batteries have a lithium cell pack and what we call a BMS or a battery management system on top. So the BMS on the normal pack will take care of high voltage, low voltage, uh, over current, um, it will also take care of the cell balancing side of things and add all our safety features in. And then what we've actually got is two separate packs and two BMSs operated by a push button on the top. So no different to the little lithium jump packs that you might carry in your glove box yep. or whatever it might be. We've got one integrated into our batteries. So we've got our main cell um, with its own BMS and then our reserve cell that we can push at, uh, at the push of a button there. Well, I've, I've definitely used that feature in the 70, leave the UHF on and stuff like that for a week. Kills the battery, you've got to start the car again. It's super useful. You push it and engage it and off it goes. Now, the other thing that's, um, that I've been really impressed with with the battery is its capacity, both in um, CCA, cold cranking amps, and the, um, and the amp power part of it. Now, I know lithiums are a bit different in how the whole amp power thing works. How does that kind of relate to the megalifes? Yeah, sure, they are a bit different. Um, so what we've done just to make sure that it's a bit of a standard is we've given this the standard amp hour rating, which is what you see on a lead acid battery, but it doesn't quite equate the same to usable capacity, like you said. So, you know, a battery of our N70 size on its main cell will have 50 amp hours, yep. um, which in full drive world might seem a little bit low for a battery of that size. The difference being with lithium and particularly with the way we have our BMS set up is that we can use 100% of that amp hour capacity. So you might see on a regular lead acid or AGM that the recommendation is to only discharge to 50% of its capacity yep. or its rated capacity to make sure that the battery lasts, to make sure that you get you know, the full power over many years. Um, with lithium, mainly because of the chemistry itself, uh, you're more than happy to discharge 100% of the amp hour rating 
without any damage to the battery. Uh, so yeah, our, our 50 amp hours yep. is actually 50 amp hours to use rather than say something of the same size having 100 amp hours only using 50% is actually the same. So capacity wise um, in the amp hour ratings we're actually, although the numbers don't look great yep. uh, because it's an old test measure, the usable capacity is, is very high and we also have a very high cycle life on that capacity. So typically on a, on a lithium cell, again, just because of the chemistry, we're getting anywhere between 1,500 and 2,000 cycles. Yeah. Um, maybe you let us get somewhere between 300 to 700 cycles on a really yeah. good quality one. So we're seeing, although the, the, the standard ratings don't, uh, don't measure up in the pure number, we're actually seeing a lot more usable capacity over its life than we would yeah. on a lead acid. Um, the other side of that power is the cold cranking amps, the CCA yeah. that you mentioned. Um, again, mainly because lithium chemistry has a lot lower internal resistance, we can put out a lot of power. So we don't have the resistance of having to push the current through the yep. lead. Um, again, a battery like this one on the main cell will have about 1300 CCA, which is uh, a lot. It's a beast. It's, a, it's an absolute beast, that's right. And you know, you, you can actually hear the difference when you turn the key. It's a nice, nice sensation to have to make sure that thing starts, starts up nice and quick. Um, so that CCA is, is great for obviously starting quickly. Yep. And then that's the other reason why we can fit this little reserve cell in here. It's being lithium again, has a high CCA. So it might not have a big capacity on the reserve cell, but it's definitely got enough power to get you started if you, if you manage to flatten your main cell. Yeah. Well, the, the, they are very flexible. And with having that, those two cells, um, one of my mates got a Ranger and he was tossing up about putting a dual battery system in for trips to Fraser and stuff like that. He runs a fridge in the Ranger. And we said, well, why don't we give this a go? Cause we can put that in. It's got, got that huge um, deep draw through the main part of the battery. And if you know, worst thing happens, he kills it. Um, you know, he can hit the button and the car's still gonna start. So um, give us a bit of a comparison, I reckon, between say the setup of a dual battery system versus one of these, because that's ultimately what these could be compared against. It is a viable option to do instead of a dual battery system. So weight and stuff like that is obviously, again, an issue. Yeah, I mean, that, that's it. Uh, depending on, everybody's setup's different. So, you know, if you do need 400 amp hours to get you through a week, it's probably not the solution, but you're dead right. There is a, a viable alternative um, for a few reasons. One being the, just the install ease, um, you know, we don't need a DC-DC, we don't need a bracket amount, we don't need wiring. All we really need to do is take your old battery out, drop a mega life in, and like you said, if you're needing to run a fridge overnight or you're just going away for a day or whatever it might be, there really would be no issue having, you know, what we're calling a full usable 50 amp hours in a size like this. Yep. Worst case scenario, press the button and away you go. So that's one side of it. Um, the weight thing is another one. If we're looking at dual battery under bonnet, like I said, it's wiring, DC, DC charger, second battery itself, yeah. bracketry, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, if your customers are towing or they're worried about overall weight, which we all are all the time, yeah. um, we don't have to have all that extra and we're gonna drop two thirds of battery weight in the process. So rather than adding 50 kilos, we're actually saving 20. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a sort of a bit of a sell in itself. Um, the other thing with these, uh, more than capable of being charged up by a solar panel. Um, yep. We'll take you know any sort of external charging source if you needed it in worst case scenario. And what we recommend is you know if it does go flat or you, you're going to have to run for more than a day without using the car, start it up. We'll take full charge from your alternator and it'll be back to full you know really quickly. Yeah, excellent. Now, a lithium starter battery under the bonnet. This is a contentious issue. We get it all the time. And it was, it was something I was quite concerned about putting a lithium under my bonnet. I don't particularly want to catch fire in the middle of nowhere. So these are rated for under bonnet use. Give us a bit of a background of that and sure, what it all sure. means. So a, a couple of things first, um, you know, no different to lead acid you can have you know, flooded lead acid, AGM, you know, whatever it might be, there's a few different varieties. In lithium cells, there's a few different varieties as well. So the cells that we use are a lithium iron phosphate cell. Um, they're the, generally considered the safest of the lithium cells. So that's our first point that's, you know, it's not the Samsung phone on fire issue. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a different, different chemistry, um, which is the safest of the lithium chemistries. We then add our BMS, 
So our BMS takes care of any under voltage, any high voltage, uh, it has a temperature cutoff, it does cell balancing, um, it does short circuit protection, all of those safety features that if something was to go wrong, we're pretty much covered by our BMS. The third thing we do is the way we actually case the batteries. So these are a, a hard ABS case. We build our pack, put our BMS on top, we drop it inside the case, and then we fill the entire battery with an expandable foam. So that helps us with any vibration. It's a bit of extra heat insulation, like yep. you said. Um, so yeah, we're comfortable to warrant our batteries up to 80 degrees under bonnet temperature. Um, yeah, no doubt, like any piece of electronic equipment, don't mount it next to your turbo. <laughs> but uh, in most stock locations behind a headlight, somewhere in a cooler part of the engine bay, we so far haven't seen consistent battery temps yep. of, of that 80 degrees, and we're more than happy to warrant them for under bonnet use. Yeah. And under the bonnet of 70s, they do get pretty hot. So that was something we were concerned yeah, about yeah. in early days. And we did some temperature monitoring under, under the bonnet from the rat run last year. And I think we saw 70, 77 degrees under there. So it does get pretty warm in 40 degree ambient. Yeah, sure. No problem at all. And I do tend to kill second batteries. <laughs> Um, I go through about one a year due to under bonnet temperatures. I've had all of the big names and all the different chemistries. The only one that seems to be lasting though is this battery. Sure. So I have a lot, lot of confidence in it. Okay, so following on from under bonnet temperatures and things like that that can affect batteries, other things is Australia and off-road. So dust and vibration and stuff like that. Um, how do these batteries how, um, hold up to that? Yeah, so um, we've passed the OXP8 water rating, which is uh, ingress of water and dust. So we, as I said before, when we build the cell pack, we put the BMS on top, we drop it in the box, uh, we fill it with an expandable foam, and then we glue the whole thing together. So it's completely sealed. Um, the extra foam inside is is what helps us with our vibration. So none of the wires are rattling loose or co you know connections coming apart, any of that sort of stuff all packed inside the case and all ready to go. I mean, I've seen you guys put them through some pretty pretty heavy tests out there and, and we're happy that they're, um, they're going to last in Australian conditions. Yeah, well, they, they certainly seem to. And um, you were saying before that um, you know, not only the IXPA standard, there are other standards that the batteries are tested to? Yeah, that's right. Um, there's quite a few standards that lithium batteries need to hold up to to be rated uh, in the correct safety ways. So one of the biggest ones that we've passed every test on is the UN 38.3 test. So that's everything from the amount of electromagnetic frequencies they put out to a 10 meter drop test to uh, the cardboard boxes that they ship in to the way that they're isolated everything about it so yeah we're um we haven't just come in and, and phone by yeah. wire we've ticked all the right boxes taken the good technology from our racing make sure that it's safe and that it's legal and that it passes all the international standards and yeah we're, we're really happy with the result that we've got yeah it's really important that all those things get ticked off for everybody's safety and when it comes to confidence warranty Sure. What's the guy? So we do a three year full replacement warranty on these batteries. Um, our warranty documents are no different to anybody else's. You know, if you decide to um, mount it upside down under a turbo, like I said, uh, there's a little temp sticker on top that might flag off. Um, but barring putting a puncture hole in the side of the things, uh, no issue for us to, to warrant these batteries for three years. Yep. Uh, life expectancy wise, you know, on a cycle life, we're looking at five times the length of a lead acid battery. Um, with the amount of CCA we have, we're not on the starter for as long. So we're looking, to, you know, expected service life of six to 10 years on these batteries, but they are warranted for three. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I'm converted. Obviously we've got one in my car. We've put one in the old man's car. So now we've gone through kind of the difficult stuff. What about charging them? So uh, luckily for us, the, uh, the output of the alternator on a car is, is a perfect charge for a lithium battery. Um, the rectified AC that you get out of an alternator comes in the form of a constant current, constant voltage charge, which is exactly how the lithium batteries like to go. Yep. So for us, anywhere between that 13.8 and 14.6 volts at a constant current, constant voltage is a perfect charge and I'll keep these in top shape. Uh, like I said, the BMS takes care of anything that you might go too high or too low on also does the cell balancing and that sort of stuff inside. So yeah. as long as they see somewhere around that from an output of an alternator, which is 100% standard for, for the automotive industry output, yeah. Um, yeah, these things will be in great shape. Do you need anything special if the um, battery's on the shelf for any amount of time for charging it? 
No, generally speaking, um, the lithium batteries will be uh, a longer shelf life and a, a less discharge rate than a lead acid. Um, like anything, uh, you wouldn't leave it on the shelf for five years and expect it yep. to be fine. But on the other side of things, the reserve cell will actually get, a, get you out of that situation as well. So yeah, just um, yeah, no need to trickle charge, no need to do any of that sort of stuff. Um, the way they are set up as a starting battery, obviously we expect that the car will be started either on the main cell or the reserve cell and then the rest of it's taken care of by the BMS yep. once you get going anyway. Yeah, interesting. Now, there is a lot that goes into one of these lithium batteries. Uh, quite a bit more, I suspect, than um, a, a cheap lead acid battery, which means they probably are gonna be a bit more expensive. Tell us a bit about that and where it kind of fits in. Yeah, sure. I mean, there's, there's no word of a lie. These are probably one of the most expensive batteries you can find on the market, but uh, it's not about the cost, it's about the value in our, our eyes. So, couple of things that make the difference here. Um, if we're looking at it as a dual battery replacement, uh, simple drop in, no extra battery, no tray, no labor, no wiring, no BCDC charger, none of this sort of stuff that can add up to some big money. Um, so by dropping one of these in, we're actually working out cheaper than doing a dual battery conversion in that case. Um, if we look at it from another point of view, if you are gonna run it as a uh, deep cycle or dual battery replacement, um, with the amount of cycle life we get through lithium, we're going to see three to four times the life of a lead acid battery. So if you're spending 500 bucks on a good AGM uh, and this thing is twice the price, but three times the life, you're actually ahead at the end of the day anyway. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the other performance based things that let's face it, everything with a high performance costs money. So yeah. <laughs> if you need more CCA, if you're looking for a lightweight alternative so you can keep your car legal and add some accessories or whatever it might be over the front axle, um, really there's, there's, there's no other way to get it. Uh, and you get all the other bonus benefits as well with the reserve cell and the extra power and the long life and all that sort of thing. So yes, yeah. these are an expensive battery, but they are uh, worth the money because of what you get as the final result. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I'm, I'm convinced. Now, um, how do people find more out about Mega Life? Sure. Well, um, the first thing we recommend is to come and see the guys at the Time Performance Center. <laughs> um, one of the reasons being is, is it's hard to explain to people how these things go weight wise. So if they can come to a place like this and you can throw one in their hands and they can pick them up, um, they're not demos. They're the real thing. They are that light. Yep. Uh, it's, it's a great place to start. Um, the other place to find us is, is pretty much everywhere online. So megalifebattery.com.au, all the social platforms is Megalife Battery Australia. We're an Australian company and yeah, we're all over the internet like you guys. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thanks for coming in and giving us a pretty comprehensive education of these lithium starting batteries by Megalife. And um, if you're interested in more things to put in your vehicle and things like that, check us out on our social media channels so you don't miss out.